July. It is uh, 0913, 9 a.m. 13 minutes. This is the Chris Abraham Show. This is season 5, episode 25. Sorry, season 5, episode 26, if you're counting. And I am just going to chat for a while. Because it was really funny. Um, as you might know, Threads, or Thread, uh, opened yesterday. That's uh, Zuckerberg's Zuckerbird. And uh, I jumped on, and all the first people from Twitter who haven't followed me or liked me or talked to me or whatever pop up into my world immediately. You know, people like, I don't know, Christopher Penn or Chris Perillo or... Um, all the guys who blocked or muted, muted me, muted me on, uh, on Twitter are now there again. So I don't know whether I'm going to troll them or whether I'm going to play nice, but man, they say the most inane things and I just can't be that guy. I guess the nicest thing I've ever said is be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. But that is maybe Philo of Alexandria, maybe Socrates, I don't know, maybe Plato. But it's good advice, right? And the other one is, um, um, the, the, um, the other one is the, um, serenity prayer. So know what you can change, know what you can change, and have the wisdom to know the difference. Uh, change the things you can, know the things you cannot change, and have the wisdom to know the difference. So those are my two truisms, but like everything else is about be nice to the, those people around you and so forth. But like, I don't think that's even possible. I don't think it's even realistic. I, I do not think that we have a lot of agency over the people around us. I feel like it needs to constantly be an attempt to get along, little doggy. So I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I don't know if I want to. I want to share heterodox content from enemy combatant news media. But that is always that always falls down like a lead balloon. I mean, every time I do that on Mastodon as Chris at Abraham SU, I get someone coming in saying, "You shouldn't share this. This is untrue. This is not true. How dare you spread this misinformation and disinformation?" And my response is always cutting and pasting what they say and replacing RT or Sputnik or Epoch News or whatever, Al Jazeera or, or whatever, with either the BBC or CNN or MSNBC or Fox News or ABC or CBS or NBC News or uh, New York Times, Washington Post. Etc. News because I don't believe I believe they're all spinning. I believe they're all messaging, 
I believe they're all uh, selling propaganda. And I think it's important to cross, uh, cross compare. You should analyze what the enemy is saying. Right? So if you think that uh, Iran is your enemy, or if you think that Russia is your enemy, or if you think that China is your enemy, you better make a point of sharing it, um, sharing the information that they're providing. There might be an important hint in there. There might be an important suggestion. There could be something to read the lines about. Here's the thing. The problem is, is that people feel like they have stewardship over their community and they believe that everybody else is gullible and they believe that nobody has the ability to discern from themselves and they believe that it is their responsibility to be the lane monitor, right? What is a lane monitor? Uh, it's not a woman named Elaine monitor. It is that terrible person in elementary or high school who believes it's their job to keep everyone safe, right? Not an employee of the, go of the school, not a teacher, not a security officer, not a principal or vice principal, not a uh, counselor. It is, for whatever reason, generally a nerd who is doing law enforcement. And by virtue of that, he's also um, doing things so as to curtail your general access to and ability to uh, be what he thinks is lawless, whether he thinks it's uncool or whether he uh, thinks that it's unjust or whether he thinks that it's a lie or whatnot. And so you can also call these, I call these people hall monitors because that's what they call them in school. And then when I'm on the road, the word lane monitor was stolen from uh, Michelle Nolan's dad. And he would always uh, fuck up the day of someone who is going the speed limit in the passing lane. Um, he, and me too, until I turned 50, would always make, try to make a point of scaring the bejesus out of that person to such an extent that they hang up their, their keys. You know, you do that for bicyclists, you do that for, for, for um, pedestrians, you do that with um, lane monitors, what you do is you know that they're high strung anyway. All you need to do is do some basic psychology, which is to say you just need to make them have a, a panic attack associated with being um, dive bombed on the freeway or on the road. And then they're gonna start associating that bad behavior, which they think is lane monitoring behavior, they will associate that with um, impending death, and hopefully they'll get off the road. But yeah, it's not your job. It's not your job to tell me how fast I can move with traffic at. And I am going to scare you into never wanting to drive again and needing to get on a prescription of, uh, of anti-anxiety drugs. I don't do that anymore. Now I'm a cowpoke. Now most of the vehicles I get can barely, you know, barely have uh, 35 to 70 horsepower and being 300 pounds, you know, I'm never getting anywhere fast. I used to be that guy who blocked uh, bicyclists and scooters of anybody um, under 16 uh, that were uh, biking or riding on the sidewalk. Because the road is where you're supposed to ride as an adult. So if you have the ability to get your driver's license, even if you haven't, and you are on a scooter or an e-bike or an e-scooter or your bicycle or a push um, scooter, I will not make it easy for you to pass, although I do have a, a, um, a loophole. 
which is if you are on a really crappy bike and it looks like you're going to your really crappy job as a really underpaid dishwasher, I will surely make way for you because uh, you probably are not part of the system at all and you're probably just trying to get along and you probably don't even necessarily know that it's going to result in me blocking your way if you ride your bicycle on the on the sidewalk. If it's not a bike trail, if it's not a footpath uh, by which to say a mixed-use bike path, and if it's not the road, then you shouldn't be on there. If you're like 15, 14, 13, I guess you shouldn't be on the road because you're a stupid kid. But you are an adult as far as I'm concerned, the moment that you can drive a, a car. So technically speaking, you're an adult at 15 too because you can drive a car with a permit. So, yesterday, um, I periodically go and pop over and look at my uh, podcast list to see what's going on with Alex Jones and uh, InfoWars. And uh, it just so happens that Alex Jones, in, uh, and the reason why I do that is because a few days ago, Alex Jones interviewed Roseanne Barr. And that was such a shit show. Holy crap. I highly recommend it. And, uh, and so I, 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 tur- I turned it on as I was going to bed. And, but I went to sleep too quickly, so I didn't actually get the gist. So while I'm working today, if you want to, and if you listen to this, while I'm working today, you're welcome to pop in on social media and ask me, how the interview with uh, Comment the uh, David Ike is. So I'm sure you all know who um, Alex Jones is. He's the conspiracy theorist who, after 18 months, his conspiracy theories are always proven correct. Every single one of them. Whether or not that truth is suppressed or not, like it always ends up being at least symbolically true. So. But he doesn't help the narrative at all because lane monitors and hall monitors really hate him. I guess tweet monitors, social monitors, these are the people that feel it's really important to come and report on me to my uh, instance manager on Abraham.su, which always seems to confuse them because, first of all, I'm really psyched because in my Mastodon, I changed my name to Chris Schlepp. So people might just think Abraham.su is just like a regular instance and just isn't Chris Abraham's instance of one on Mastodon. But I look forward to it because I want to believe every single thing that David Icke says. I've been a, a real scholar of David Icke-ness for, since the 90s. And so I'm highly amused by everything he says, you know, about uh, there being reptilian aliens and the royals are shape-shifting reptilians and that reptilians live uh, uh, in an uh, inner world, you know, like that, uh, that uh, center, of the, center of the earth uh, movie or novel or whatever. He believes that there, that the, I think it's him, I think he believes that where the core is when you study geography, no, geology, where the Earth's molten core is, someone like David Icke believes that there is a inner sun, and that inner sun has an entire world of civilization on a hollow Earth. You've heard of the hollow Earth theory. Um... Or maybe you've only heard about the flat earth theory. The flat earthers oftentimes compete with the hollow earthers because a hollow earth suggests a globe, an ovoid, and a flat earther suggests pretty much like not even any basement, like just like um, 
Tex like a Texas home, right? No basement. Uh, just there's a firmament, a mechanical firmament. There's Jesus and God and Holy Spirit using their divine architect of the universe, clockwork. But then there's the hollow earthers who believe that there are things like the Nordics or the blondes or the greys, grey aliens or the reptilian aliens or the praying mantis aliens or what else? Our future selves who developed into grey aliens and then come back to the present times from a thousand years or 500 years in the future looking for sperm and ovum so that they can mess up their evolved janky ass ovoid head or oval head and giant black eyes. Um, I'm looking, really looking forward to seeing what he's going to say. Now, if you think it's your job to report misinformation like a little narc, or if you feel like it's your job to report uh, link bombing by me from Sputnik and the RT, you're a narc. If you're going to go ahead and call 911 while you're in the passing lane, while I'm buzz bombing you and driving way too close and stopping in front of you and slowing in front of you and doing all the kinds of things to make you decide to give up driving, you're a narc. And don't forget, snitches get stitches. I do think that people self-identify with being a, a narc. And I don't even think that's being a narc. Like, I feel like it is cultural it's cultural cleansing it's it's a a type of cultural cleansing right i do not think that the shit posters ever report other people's posts although i think that people might be doing it if they think that someone is a groomer i think that's one step too far for the perception of whoever's a groomer, I think when it comes to kids, whether it's um, anti-Christian, anti-Catholic, anti-scouts, anti-groomers, or whether it's anti-trans, anti, -trans, anti um, non-binary, anti-hormone therapy, from the age of, you know, eight, uh, anti-top surgery, anti-bottom surgery, all that stuff. I feel like there are people who will become, report, will start reporting and muting and blocking and all that other kind of stuff when it comes to what is perceived on both sides as being um, anti-children. Especially if the messaging sounds like they're being pro-Christian and if people start saying things like, uh, this is important health care, this is essential health care, because otherwise a child will commit suicide. All those keywords sound good, but the people opposed to that consider that to be um, evil or demonic or whatever. And I think if it comes to... Um, minor attracted people, maps, or when it becomes to, um, we're here, we're clear, sorry, we're here, we're queer, we're taking your children, I, I definitely see that um, hall monitoring can work both ways. I think that if you have what's called Trump derangement syndrome and you think that the uh, that you think that your America, which you probably hate, is at the precipice of being a taken over by Nazis, who you're willing to call traditional white Americans, who are pro-family, pro-trad, pro-husband and wife, pro-religion, pro-orthodoxy, 
and anti-atheism, you call those people Christo-fascists. And if you call someone who's in a traditional gender role marriage uh, an abomination, and if you call people who do not agree personally with the right to choose to have an abortion, or even if you choose someone who, even if you, even if that someone doesn't believe in IVF or any other type of tailoring of ovum, and a tailoring, tailoring of, uh, of, um, of the insemination process to, uh, decide which, which, uh, which babies, which zygotes, which babies, which future, which fetuses you're willing to let, uh, go to full term or which ones you will delete. I think they call it delete. I don't think they call it terminate. Embryos. That's right. Embryos. I feel like I can understand and people understand that if they report these kinds of things in the past anyway, um, there will quickly be a block and you can block people on your own. You can block people on every single platform, but blocking someone isn't enough. Home monitors are out there lane monitors are out there to do the good work for everybody around them. It is their God-given jerk, uh, jerk. It's their God-given, uh, right. It's their, sorry, it's their blessing upon this earth to be the curators, to be the stewards, to be the role models of all the people around them who are vulnerable, are naive, are childlike, and they need to be protected for wrong speak. They need to be protected from um, from certain types of degeneracy, from certain types of narratives. They are being exposed to terrible things, and so they need to be actively informed that these what is right, what is wrong, what is correct, what is incorrect, what is actually dangerous, what a Nazi is, what a fascist is. Things such as, um, simple things, such as uh, Antifa is only an ideology, it actually is in a group. And simple things, like January 6th was an insurrection, and that Trump needs to be put into jail and prevented from running because he didn't play by the rules. I literally have a guy who wrote that. He's like, he's just not willing to go along He's just not willing to follow the rules. He's just not willing to do what he's told to do. He is, yes, he might be democratically elected. There might be people who want him elected using democratically re Republican constitutional representational voting. Um, but... Just because there's enough people to get him in, and just because uh, the electoral college might work in his in his to his benefit, by any means necessary, we need to take him out because he does not he he will pursue reprisal. Um, and in terms of reprisal, the Democrats that are doing have done a better job against Trump with regards to that than anybody else. Like. Who did he reprise against? Who did he attack? Who did? What did he do? Like, he barely did anything. Everybody slow-walked or lost the executive orders or did not comply. Like, those are proud things, not to comply with what you think. Like, when you live in a world where, um, where Adolf Hitler and the Nazi party... Um, told, uh, the, you know, the soldiers and so forth, told at The Hague uh, while they were being uh, thrown into jail for human rights violations, they were told, uh, they, they said, you know, famously, I was only following orders. So everybody on social media is de facto French resistance. And so I totally respect that. 
I just think the blind can't lead the blind. Um, and everybody thinks that they're at least the one-eyed or the two-eyed, or they think that they have a certain level of, of knowledge or gnosis, or they might, um, in fact, know what the end game is, and they, for a fact, know what fascism is know what fascism is or isn't and fascists are like porn you know one when you see one and um always punch nazis in the mouth or is it in the throat or in the face always be punching nazis um i don't know i think it's funny when people escalate i mean if i keep on doing it if i keep pushing hard I think I pushed so hard with counter messaging, and I think I posted so many um, news tweets onto my uh, inst my instance at Abraham.su. I think I did it to the point where when I went to the last get together for a No Agenda Nights 60th birth 60th birthday, I know that people were kind of quietly saying that I am. Uh, um, that I am a, a Mastodon spammer. So then a couple days ago, Comic Strip Blogger, CSB, told me that I shouldn't be dropping content like that. So I know what I'm going to do. I thought this through. I'm going to treat... I'm going to treat threads by meta. I'm going to treat that like as if I were seeing people in person. I'm going to do whatever I want on Twitter, and I'm going to respect the wishes of my friends on Abraham.su, on my instance of Mastodon. Um, I'm going to treat meta threads the way I generally treat Facebook, and I generally treat Instagram, which is try my best to um, pass, right? Try my best to be a good little Northern Virginia Democrat. So, that's the news. I don't know what's happening today. I know I need to get to work, and I know in 20 minutes the library opens. And I know I probably should have been working all morning, but... I don't know. I had a hard time getting awake. Before you go, just thought I'd remind you that um, the sound in the background is the lapping of uh, a fountain that is coming out of the stone paved ground, flying up into the air, making a sine wave and then crashing down into the uh, slate slabs so I do my best of trying to normalize the voice and I do my best also of trying to compress it but you are going to hear a lot of water noise in the background and hopefully that sounds okay this post is silly. I don't know if I said anything important. It is season five, episode 26, Bente Seis. Va, va, vente, vente se. Van, van. On, on, du, on. Van, vente, van, deux, van, trois, van, quatre, van, six. Vancis, and it's um, Zex und Zwanzig? Is it Zex und Zwanzig? I don't know. 26. Love you guys. Please um, subscribe, like, write a review, and fill out the polls, and let me know why you are listening to this at all. I don't know if I'm helpful, hurtful. I know that I belie my true beliefs. I belie my true beliefs. I even, up, I even uploaded all of my 
like up to season five, episode 25 yesterday, I uploaded it to Substack. So maybe you find me that way. Anyway, lots of lerve and I'll talk to you soon. Be well, get outside. I'm actually sitting at Penrose Square Park right now because my doctor tells me that I should get wicked sun in the morning, in the evening, in the morning. So this is my daily dose. I will get more sun later, but um, for now, I'm already sweating like a pig. And it's only uh, 09.43. It's only a quarter to 10. And so it goes. Um, if you haven't heard later in the day, this is a little idyllic, uh, idyllic park, but the way it's set up is it's sort of set up more like a French park, in which case um, two thirds of the park is on flagstone. I'm sitting on a powder coated, like if you think of Paris and you think about the powder coated green round outdoor cafe tables, and then you think about the powder green outdoor steel matching slatted uh, cafe chairs, then you have one third of the park, which is on crunched red gravel. I would say it's red clay or red cinder. And every, there are many trees and every light pole there is actually has working charging ports, not charging ports, power supplies or power plug. So if you want to, you can totally come here and use your computer or come here with your charger and sit and charge. It's surrounded by a Starbucks um, and a giant. There's also a new place called Taco Hachi, Taco Hachi, Japanese restaurant that I haven't been. There are two hairdressers. One is called Mancini du Paris, and the other one is the the one I go to now, which is the hair cuttery. Um, they do a really great job because my hair is uncomplicated. But I don't, I no longer want to look like a scruff. People have been really misaging me to like 75 or 80. And I, I think if I get down to 230, I don't want to look like I'm, you know, 80 years old. I want to look a little bit more like Adam Lubkin's, uh, Lubby, my my fraternity big brother. I want to be the, the Zeus that he wants me to be. I want to be a silver fox, not a pensioner. Oh, great news. This is completely neither here nor there. But when I was walking home, I slow jogged for half a block. I had my backpack on. I might try it again today. But for the last three days, I've had a little bit of a pinch in my back. And so I, I actually went to a nearby massage therapist place and I bought an hour and I got Chinese massage, which is all back, which is fine. I don't need front, but if I know that if I want my quads worked on when I start, you know, erging again, or when I start weightlifting or whatever, that I'm going to need to ask for another type. I think I might do it again next week, but I might do it for an entire 90 minutes because it didn't seem very long at all. I might even schedule it to once a week, like, although before I do that, I might even look into chiropractic care and I might call my Cigna Healthcare and see if they can help me with that. Um, so back to the park, like a quarter, a fifth of the park is this uh, water feature where kids are allowed and encouraged to play. A uh, third of the park is uh, wooden benches that I love to sit on. They're nice and cool and you can spread out. Uh, there's a, the, the area with the little kids is surrounded by a low stone wall. There are, like I said, the cafe chairs all over the place. 
their um, a entire two fifths or a third of the park is dedicated to just empty uh, flagstone space. Uh, there are two rock sculptures. Uh, they both have, I would say, I don't know, someone from uh, No Agenda said that it looks like um, the, the towers look almost identical to something that would be on, a, on the Jeffrey Epstein sex island. So go to Google Maps and look it up. And then rimmed by it are all these lovely trees and that uh, ground red cinder or red clay and an assortment of um, round cafe two-top tables and a plethora of cafe chairs and all those charging ports. And uh, it's a lovely place to hang out. It's a lovely place to do some work. It's a lovely place to for me to read uh, my various, from my various Kindles. It's a great place to record a podcast. It's a great place to take a call. Uh, I love it. It reminds me of Paris. And if you want to get me to move someplace else, uh, close this park, close the giant, close the Starbucks, and then close Ideos. I think if Ideos closed, if, if the library closed, Starbucks closed, um, giant closed. I even think I might consider moving from the neighborhood into an entirely different part of the country or the world if I, if Ideas were to close, which is why I really should go over there and spend a little bit of money there. I'll spend some money over there at 3 p.m. Um, so I'm not using my main, uh, beautiful coyote, I'm going to start, it's coyote brown, but it's starting to get dirty, so I'm going to start calling it my coyote ugly bag. Um, I'm wearing instead a Vietnam made navy blue GORUCK GR1 21 liter, and I freaking love it, which is terrible because I promised I'm going to send this bag in for um, handles all around and other stuff like that. So. Um, but I'm freaking loving it. It's just perfect for summer when you don't need a lot of stuff. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll take the fact that I'm using this bag and I will thoroughly hand clean, uh, the Coyote Ugly bag so that it's pretty again. I think the biggest reason it got dirty is because, um, there are trees in this neighborhood that I wouldn't say they're blackberry trees, but they're, during the spring there's definitely... Uh, impossible to remove stainy, stainy, stainy uh, berries that fall from the trees, get everywhere and end up on the bag. So, uh, I'm going to do that and then I'll move everything from this bag to a GR2 26 liter I have, which is in tropical camo. And while everything is out of this bag, I will send it off to uh, scar, scars, and have those adaptations made. I was going to get Ranger Green, uh, as all the handles and stuff, but they told me that if I really want a mono, if I really want a mono tone, uh, bag, I can get, um, Navy on everything. I might, you know what I'll do? Um, I will do, I'm sad that Threads doesn't have any uh, poles, but I'm gonna go on to, I'm gonna go everywhere and ask everybody if I should uh, make contrasting colors on my uh, GR2, or whether I should go completely monotone. I will let, I will be like Elon Musk and let the world decide. But other than that, I'm usually falling in love with my X300 XT, but today I'm rocking my Blue Parrot B250 uh, XTS. I'm carrying my uh, snubby, uh, black snubby, no, it's a snubby runner's kit bag because it only has the front zip and the main compartment. I'm wearing a black 
Eddie Bauer t-shirt. Underneath, I'm wearing a JL Racing unisuit. I'm wearing um, Russell black stretchy cotton athletic shorts. I'm wearing generic eBay knee, uh, ankle white cotton socks, and I'm wearing uh, Peregrine, I'm wearing Nike Pegasus 37s in all black. And I got those for only $70 uh, off of uh, Amazon because, or $65, $70, because there's a guy there that cruises all of the Nike factory stores and then sells, um, you know, uh, uh, 35, Pegasus 35, Pegasus 36, Pegasus 37s, Pegasus 38s, Pegasus 39s for wicked cheap while everybody else is buying right now the Pegasus 40. So I'm going to totally continue using him, even though I asked the entire group the question as to whether they were fake, because they felt a little fake to me. But now that I look at them, they're completely real. So I also ordered from eBay, and I got them used as a size 14 pair of uh, Ranger Green um, Noble trainer shoes, because I have... Uh, noble trainer booties, you know, like ankle boots, kind of like the same height as Converse. And they're just a pain to get on and off. So I saw a dude in noble trainers and I really liked them. So they arrived today. The guy was from, I didn't even check the guys from Alexandria. So it's just like one day. So I'll probably be wearing those a lot. I'll probably be wearing those all summer because they last forever. And um, in addition to those whiting uh, sh shoes, and hopefully I will start getting my business in order and it'll allow me much more time to spend that eight o'clock to 10 o'clock or 8.30 to 11 to 10.30 every night at the gym with Kaushik. So on my left wrist, I have a a Generation 1 Garmin Instinct Solar. Uh, they call it now the Instinct Solar uh, 1 or Instinct 1 Solar. And on my right, I have a... I have some Fitbit. And I have a pool pass and I have a copper band that says... And hopefully I won't butcher this. It says Marsh Kua. Balance, Ram, Soulève, whatever that means. If someone can tell me what that means, I'd love you forever. I know what it means, but I feel like this is an example of getting um, hieroglyphics or getting uh, Japanese or Chinese characters on your back and then realizing the character really means chump as opposed to uh, peaceful warrior. And that's it. I'm wearing a cool new pair of glasses. They're, they're Tifosi. I got them from that incredibly charming, adorable young woman at the Conti store uh, in Navy Yard. They're, um, they look a little bit like Wayfarers. They look to me like the old ski glasses I used to admire and actually owned. Um, but they've got... Um, They've got clear frames, which I think are very hip. And on my head, I am wearing... Uh, it's a boonie hat that I forgot the name of, but I have three of them. I might order a four today just because I'm kooky. And they're so awesome. But I haven't been wearing it now because I want to get as much sun as I can before I go into... Uh, until I go into the um, library for the day. Anyway, if you're still listening to me, please watch, follow, subscribe, like, star me, and all that fun stuff. Talk to you soon. Mahalo, aloha, and goodbye.
Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.